Hello guys! Today's video is about my right hand technique on bass, which I know is something that a few of you have asked me about for quite a while, so I'm going to do my best to try and explain this and kind of explain my process of how I got to the point I'm at now. Uh, sorry about the weird angle, I'm trying to get a good kind of visual on my right hand so you can see what I'm doing. But number one, the main thing that I found when I first started playing, this was kind of the first thing I picked up on and thought, wow, that really does help. That has made quite a big difference. That is moving down the strings as I move down them with this hand. So say I was playing a song that moved across all four strings, I would go... And that's all well and good, but I found that as I was moving down some of the further ones, it actually kind of held me back and made it a lot more difficult to get any kind of speed or flow to it. And eventually I kind of moulded that and changed it to I'll only move down to the E string. And that from there, I just kind of pivot my elbow, which I'll go into in a bit more detail a bit later on. But so now I don't, I, the furthest I'll move down is onto the E string, so. So that's kind of the basic thing that I did that instantly helped my right hand technique. Um, there are certain points, like at the end there, where I won't, move down depending on what's actually going on in what I'm playing so if I'm moving between the E string and the A string quite quickly I won't really bother moving down when I get to the A string because it wouldn't make sense to keep going it just makes sense to go so the kind of angle that my hand is at is like uh, just if I really accentuate that so you can see my fingers. Yeah, so I don't generally always move down, but if I'm moving down quite a fair bit, um, I usually move down and it happens fairly automatically now. So I actually was watching to see where I moved there and then realized at the end that I don't move if I'm playing on the A string and the E string in quick succession. But that's the number one thing. Um, a massively important thing I found that really improved my playing, my speed and dexterity and just overall playing in general and the sound of when I play, is keeping my hand as relaxed as possible. So all of these tendons and all of my forearm, etc. as relaxed and free as possible. So that helps, one with speed, because you're not tensing up. So as an example, if you tense up, you get this sound. And it sounds really clunky and kind of stressed out, which can be a really cool effect, but it's maybe not what you want all the time. Uh, versus if your hand is relaxed. So. so you can see in my arm as well. It just sounds a lot more, it's got a lot more flow to it and it just sounds a lot less kind of clunky and stressy. Uh, but also it's going to help you to kind of stay, keep your stamina up basically because imagine you're playing a whole song going You're going to get tired if you're constantly tensing up a lot quicker than if you can kind of relax your hand. It's going to be a lot more efficient. Uh, so what I did is every time I felt my arm or my hand tensing up, I made a conscious effort to untense it. Whether I was playing fast or slow, whatever I was doing, 
the more relaxed the better no matter what you're playing what speed you're playing um and the more i kind of made a conscious effort to notice when i was tensing my hand up the more automatic it became that i would untense it and now generally unless i'm something's going on i'm stressed or i'm particularly tired generally i'm not particularly tense when i play at any point now and it is just because i've practiced not tensing my arm up it's always a thing when you learn something new or a little bit difficult that you kind of tend to tense up because your brain is going oh this is a bit new and scary and i don't know if i can do this and if i the more tense i am the more chance i've got of being good at it but it doesn't really work like that it's often the case with everything the more relaxed you are the better it flows and the better you're actually going to be at it so relaxation in your muscles and your tendons is key in literally any walk of bass playing unless you particularly want for any specific reason that sound of going being really tensed up um the other thing i've been asked is if i use two fingers or three fingers when i play generally and the answer is i use two fingers i'll very very rarely use three fingers except for a kind of special effects i would say um because even with speed i don't really i wouldn't gravitate if i was going to do something fast to using three fingers i'd rather just like kind of go like it just feels more natural to me so generally no i use two fingers uh if i do ever use three fingers there's generally only really two reasons so one of them is for the three finger gallop sound so you've got like it has a different sound to the two finger gallop which is what steve harris uses from iron maiden most of the time two fingers uh versus it's the two finger gallop sounds more jerky and the three finger gallop has a lot more of a rolling kind of flow to it and both of them sound great and can be used to great effect depending on what kind of sound you want uh, but generally i don't tend to use that technique but that's something i might use it for occasionally uh, the other thing i might use three fingers for sometimes is say there's a stop in a song and it comes back in i'll sometimes use three fingers to kind of roll into the notes so instead of going i'll kind of go depending on if the song requires it so like it's got that kind of sound to it um but other than that i don't really tend to use three fingers in particular so no just two fingers personally uh the other thing i found that helped me increase my dexterity with my right hand were bass lines like come on girl by the red hot chili peppers so obviously i can't play the original bass line which is going to feel a bit weird because of copyright but i'll try and not fall into that habit and play some royalty free version so <laughs> the baseline as an example um that's pretty much the baseline hopefully they don't get me but it's helpful because it's moving across the strings pretty quickly so it's playing quite quickly even on just one string but it's also moving between the strings quickly as well so even if that style or type of baseline isn't something that you would be particularly interested in playing in the long run learning things like that will help you in the rest of your playing it's going to increase your dexterity no matter what type of playing you want to be doing um it's that age-old thing of like once you've done something that's so hard anything below it just feels much easier so it's that kind of thing it's worth learning a baseline like that or certain other disco bass lines maybe for an example if you can because it will increase your dexterity and that was something that i found really pushed mine up to the next level um the other thing is the way i like to play and have my basses set up is i like my strings relatively close to the pickups so i don't like to have a massive gap between the pickups and the bass 
So the reason being, when I play, I like my finger to kind of roll over the strings. I don't like the strings to be so close that they that I can't get any kind of purchase under the string. I don't want it to just kind of fall off them, but I do like them to be close enough that my fingers aren't getting stuck under the strings. So when I play, I hate that feeling of like, say as an example, I'll play here and hopefully you can see if I play from this angle. Um, my fingers kind of get stuck under the strings, so uh, it's just not the easiest thing to me because I find that you've got nothing to rest on and also you kind of just keep getting stuck or I keep getting stuck under the strings and it slows me down and I find it quite frustrating. Obviously I can play lighter and that stops me getting stuck under the strings but because as a general rule in the projects I play in I like to play quite hard it's not the most ideal to have to keep concentrating on playing lightly and not really being able to get into it so to me being able to roll over the strings instead like this <laughs> So, and I kind of play towards myself instead of away, so I'm not plucking outwards like this. Because personally I find that uncomfortable and not very economical. I tend to play more at this angle towards myself, so... you can kind of see that movement i'm trying to exaggerate it a bit but so you can see it there is one other quick thing i wanted to mention as well regarding pulling away from the bass there is one instance where i do that um that is if i'm playing harmonics or occasionally other kind of melodic things so i will pull away if i'm playing harmonics so kind of pulling away motion weirdly that actually lets the notes ring out with harmonics because if you play towards it it's kind of going to mute the strings and kill them a bit at least that's what I found so certain things like that I will pull away from the bass but as a general rule when I play I don't pull away from the bass I pull towards myself so just want to add that in um but that's kind of generally how I like to play is towards myself. I like my fingers to be able to roll over the strings because they're not getting stuck and it doesn't slow me down. It kind of makes me more dexterous and able to do what I need to do. I find it a lot more efficient to play with that kind of setup. Uh, of course, it's personal preference, but that's just what I found helped me. Uh, another thing is my arm position, so my elbow, etc. A lot of people seem to like to play with their wrist kind of hooked over the bass like this. So, personally, I'm not the greatest fan of playing like that and I prefer to keep my wrist straighter. I'm not saying one's right or wrong, but in my personal experience, when my wrist is straighter, my arm is able to actually not be constantly crunched up it feels a lot more freer my muscles again feel less tense and i feel more able to make reaches and play things that i feel ready and able to do whatever is required of my right hand on the base basically whereas when i'm at this angle i feel kind of stunted i feel like i can't stretch and the muscles in this arm feel all tensed and crunched up and i just don't particularly enjoy it so if you do play like that Obviously, if that works for you, great. If you're finding it doesn't particularly, maybe try playing with your elbow actually a bit higher. I don't mean 
ridiculously high like so you're out like this still you can still have a bit of an angle on your wrist but just maybe not to that point where it's like this um and when i actually play with my wrist straight up i tend to kind of move my elbow round as i move down the strings so i'll really overly exaggerate this first so you can see the movement <laughs> Obviously doing it to that extent wouldn't be the most economical either, but that's the kind of movement you're aiming for, but just refined, so... There's barely any in it, but it's just kind of helping to keep my wrist as straight as possible, so you can probably see... So that's my arm tensed, so that's what it looks like if it's getting tension in it, so... Obviously a certain amount of tension is required because you're not playing totally limply but this is me playing as I would play with my wrist straighter. And this is me trying to play with my wrist like this. Hopefully you can kind of see my arm. And you can see the muscles in it are kind of like freaking out. And I feel like I can't really make that stretch. So I find keeping your wrist as straight as you possibly can is really helpful as well and possibly better for tendons, especially if you're finding playing the other way uncomfortable. I'm not saying it's necessarily uncomfortable for everyone. I know a lot of people like playing that way. But for me personally, that's what I found helped. So hopefully it will make some kind of difference for you as well if you've been struggling with that kind of thing. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, another thing is I do rest, obviously, my thumb on the pickup most of the time. Uh, oh, another thing is when I'm playing hard, because obviously, again, in quite a lot of projects, I'll really hit the bass because I love to play like that. It just feels great. But there is a technique to it. I'm not just hitting the bass going... Um, there is some kind of technique behind what I'm actually doing. So I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of like, again, I'm coming at the bass towards it rather than up or straight out. I'm not like pulling on the string. Um, but what I'm doing is imagine the motion of shaking water off your hand. So you've got a really limp movement and at the end you tense up and it gives it that kind of snap. That's what's going on here. That's probably the best way I can describe it. So as I'm hitting the string, I'm not just hitting it. I'm kind of going... Uh, obviously, I won't always move my hand up off it, but it gives it a certain different kind of a sound. So let's say I'm hitting a big open note. I will come off the string because one, it feels great. And two, it lets it really breathe. So and I'm kind of it's coming into that motion of giving me the correct rhythm and kind of really getting into that feeling of whatever I'm playing or whatever. But the other way I'll do it is I won't necessarily always leave the body of the bass. Um, it's the same technique. I'm just leaving my thumb rested on. So it's that same snappy technique coming towards the bass. make some kind of sense so what I'm doing basically in essence is I'm coming towards the bass hitting it with a sharp snap but the rest of the time I'm actually not tensed up I'm quite kind of loose with how I'm playing it's just that initial hit 
attack on the string that is the sharp snap that gives it that really aggressive sound. So I think that's pretty much covered everything, hopefully. Um, if there is something I haven't covered in this, please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, it's always kind of a weird one to think of every single thing you do, so I'm really sorry if I've forgotten anything. And hopefully this has answered any questions that you did have. But if not, please do drop me a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. So I hope this has been enjoyable or interesting or just a different insight to how you play if you have different techniques that work for you. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please, one, consider heading to my band camp in the link below and checking out some of my original music. I also have lots in a playlist on here uh on my youtube that are all like improvised jams or some written ones but also i have a patreon if you feel like supporting the channel further it really massively helps but absolutely no pressure if not thank you so so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed this and i will see you next time bye <laughs>